basically this uh, wound care is a huge challenge because it is broken multiple care setting multiple doctors multiple comorbid conditions but the patient in the center is not given the uh, hands-on guidance for self-care and every three minutes in america there is a limb lost and the, if that does not cause more uh, of us to get more angry at the situation you see this data. There are options, active interventions that could be taken to improve this chronic disease condition. If you forget anything that I told you, please remember one thing. In diabetic foot wounds, there is need for 56% greater protein intake. Our next speaker is a board certified infectious disease physician, certified wounds, wound specialist, diplomate of the American Board of Obesity Medicine an associate professor of Mercer University School of Medicine, please welcome Dr. Ravi Kamapelli. Hi guys, uh, thank you for having me today. Thank you, Dave. Uh, do you guys know which is one of the cons costliest complications of diabetes and that is least discussed about? And I guess most of people think it's car cardi cardiac disease, but it is diabetic foot ulcers. And I am Dr. Kamapali. I'm going to talk today about metabolically optimized wound care, which is a patient-centric platform. And I am in Atlanta. And basically, uh, my Twitter X handle is wound physician and hashtag removing barriers to healing. So my conflicts of interest are nothing but uh, uh, working on building a comprehensive telemedicine-based solution for obesity, metabolic health, and infectious disease. And these are the companies that I'm invested in, but most of them are healthcare companies. And um, the platform that I use is uh, colligomed.com, and I, I want to be the change that I want to see in the world. That's why I invest only in healthcare companies and try to make it happen for the patients that I serve. So quickly, um, this is a 40-year-old uh, security guard who essentially had uh, diabetes since 15 years and ended up with uh, significant problems with the diabetic uh, foot gangrene and uh, changes in the foot. If you see there, uh, the, her uh, sugars are high, her uh, creatinine is high, I saw her in 2023. Ended up uh, introducing low carb uh, and uh, helped her guide through this platform-based approach. And we were featured on the Guardian um, uh, uh, article and she is one of the patients who was a survivor with the foot on. Yes, it is deformed, it is charcoal foot, but she has a foot, she walks on it. So we're going to talk about how to understand the scope of the problem, metabolic health and wound healing and the key concepts that are there and understand the inflammation and immune response and integrating metabolic health into wound care protocols, how collaboratively we, need, we can change it and also what are the technological innovation, the future directions and how we can health advocacy do it in, through health advocacy and the key takeaways. Platform-based approach is what is needed for professionally directed patient-involved whole person solution wherein we are preventing the patients from falling into the river and then pulling them out with stents and all those. We are all medical doctors and medical professionals are in the end game of medicine where the fat mass disease is causing significant problems. And I deal mostly with the complications of the end, end game of disease happening, which is uh, end organ damage. And here we have a, a retrospective chart review that we did on the low carb approach to the patients that we are able to do it. Um, and to, of these patients, there were like 29 of them we reviewed and 11 of them uh, were diabetics. And of those 11 in the people who were compliant with the diabetes, uh, low carb approach were healing within uh, 10 weeks. Whereas in a standard of care for diabetes is it has to heal by 50% uh, in one month for it to go on to heal by 12 weeks. Uh, we did that in these 20, 29 patients, but uh, in these 11 patients and nine of them who were very compliant, we did them with reduction of medication, improving their weight, improving their waist circumference. You can uh, later uh, get that QR code and see the poster and the uh, review. And Basically, this uh, wound care is a huge challenge because it is broken, multiple care setting, multiple doctors, multiple comorbid conditions, but the patient in the center is not given the uh, hands-on guidance for self-care, and that's what I wanted to uh, heal or improve. And basically, you need to know that there's a huge burden on wound care, $33 billion of that uh, diabetes uh, is a huge problem, and uh, it is more recorded, and 1.2 
every 1.2 seconds, someone develops a diabetic foot ulcer, and every 20 seconds, there is an amputation, and there is 34% lifetime risk in diabetics to develop diabetic foot ulcers, and more than 50% of them get infected, 20% of the diabetic foot ulcers result in amputation, and 85% of the amputations that are caused by non-traumatic uh, causes are due to diabetes, and every three minutes in America, there is a limb lost, and the, if that does not cause more uh, of us to get uh, uh, more angry at the situation, you see this data, uh, wherein diabetes is c costlier uh, when compared to cancer, and also one third of the direct costs of the diabetes are attributed to uh, lower extremity uh, problems. And if you see cancer, five-year mortality is 9%, whereas all cancers, it's, it's only 31%, whereas diabetic foot amputation is 50%. Only lung cancer is higher than that. You have to understand that diabetic foot ulcer, lower estimate amputation appear to be more than just the marker of poor health. They are independent risk factors for premature death. So we know that there's a huge problem with uh, uh, diabetic foot ulcer because there, there happens to be a huge issue with neuropathy, vasculopathy, secondary infection leading to diabetic foot ulceration, whereas the reason underlying chronicity of the wounds is because of uh, nutrient deficiencies, but also chronic inflammation, senescence, and genetic factors and surgery. There are options, active interventions that could be taken to improve this chronic disease condition. And actually what happens in this acute phase is there is injury, there is a release of uh, damage associated molecular patterns and pathogen associated molecular patterns, netosis and aphrocytosis happen, and M1 macrophages convert to M2 macrophages and wounds go on to heal. Whereas in chronic wounds, that conversion is lacking. And we understand these four phases of healing, injury, coagulation, inflammation, migration, and remodeling. We're going to only talk about nutrition. This would be a one and a half hour lecture if I talk about all the, uh, the causes. But you have to understand that metabolic syndrome is a huge problem where the wound gets stuck in the metabolic phase. There is increased uh, problems with more of collagen degradation products, which is matrix metalloproteinases. And the inhibitors of the matrix metalloproteinases are reduced. And there is increased TNF alpha, MCP1, and matrix metalloproteinase 9, which are found in higher um, uh, uh, numbers in metabolic syndrome. Obviously, in metabolic syndrome, this is increased, and that causes problem. Coming to diabetes, we all know about ages and rages, and the problem with that is, is huge, and th the complications in diabetes is uh, because of uh, neutrophil inefficient uh, activity. When there is that, uh, there is a significant aspect also in, di in infection aspect where when there is pH changes, the staph aureus infections are also increased. So we know about glycation and all these seven times uh, fructose being high. And by the way, there is no such thing as a touch of diabetes. Uh, everyone who has diabetes it runs the risk of serious complications. So what happens with infection in diabetes? This was a study done in 1973. And we have to understand that once uh, you have sugar, it takes around two hours uh, of postpondially to affect. Uh, that ill effect is lasting around five hours. If there is somebody who is fasting for 36 hours, the, the phagocytic activity increases. Uh, and also, you have to understand that when there is uh, glycation, the methyl glyoxal forms even affecting the natural killer cells. So, also, the huge issue of this problem is a reactive oxygen species where through TH17 activity, there is increased reactive oxygen species and TGF beta activation causing the problem. So in infection, there is increased risk of lung infections, there is increased risk of uh, skin infections, and this cycle continues leading to increased uh, inflammation and also cytokine production, insulin resistance, and hyperglycemia. And this causes significant problems with uh, gut microbiome changes, host changes, innate immunity changes, and, uh, and also uh, active immune system changes that are causing. And significantly, these infections, I recently saw a patient with Burkholderia infection, and she is, uh, she is pre-diabetic. And that tells us that in 50% of the cases that individuals with diabetes, this bug does not, uh, cannot be taken care of. So that happens in all these other conditions, uh, including mucormycosis that is very huge in uh, diabetes outcome uh, problems. So what happens? How do you detect malnutrition? Is this six criteria? Out of these six criteria, if two are present, then we call malnutrition. Then the next thing is what, whether you see whether there is inflammation or not, and that inflammation, is, is it moderate or marked, and that leads to chronic problems with acute or chronic changes. So in 
in when there is healing problem there is anabolism and catabolism obviously if there is catabolism the wounds don't, don't go on to heal and there are different societies have come up with different criteria you identify the uh, malnutrition then you empower the end, uh, the the professionals to go after that and create some quality indicators but sadly nobody talks about the root cause of this problem which is insulin resistance and also high prevalence of vitamin deficiency and we know that ade uh, ck and all these are problem but we have to understand that calorie restriction is a huge problem if we calorie restrict that we, that will impact on wound care and obviously with there is increased cortisol production everybody talks about replacing with carbohydrates which is wrong and insulin resistance that has to be addressed is not being addressed so protein that is significant protein intake the real protein intake of high quality protein which is needed for all these uh, nutrients and that will help with angiogenesis collagen synthesis and also scaffolding and fibroblast formation if you forget anything that i told you please remember one thing in diabetic foot wounds there is need for 56% greater protein intake that's one thing please remember and insulin is needed obviously insulin is needed for wound healing which regulates inflammation uh, promotes uh, tissue regeneration stimulates collagen synthesis and angiogenesis but local insulin application is not much used it's not much studied so th that is something that has to change but in when there is insulin resistance there is impaired immune system delayed healing and scarring the wounds get stuck in the inflammatory stage and the movement does not happen and that's a problem obviously metabolic reprogramming happens and Uh, these these enzymatic activities change so there's macrophage changes that are needed uh, the, the m1 macrophages have gone to m2 macrophages so and basically if you see this macrophage kind of uh, respond to uh, factors that are there inflammatory markers and then they are, they go on to do the job so m1 to m2 macrophages happening is huge and obviously in uh, nutrient reprogramming is very much happening in uh, in in uh, ketogenic diet where there is Im better use of lipids and amino acids that helps with uh, all the stages there is a uh, increased atp needs in the wound that are met and tissue remodeling that happens better and this was a study done by dam and shannon and basically this was uh, one of the uh, thing that prompted me to look into more into wound caring and ketogenic diet where in ketones show re reduction of re reactive oxygen species and reducing inflammation and increasing the blood flow so this was another study for from an infectious disease standpoint this bug is very bad. Bad, okay mycobacterium ulcerans and in, it creates something called as mycolactone and in ketone present that's gone so that goes on to healing inflammation and oxidative stress is huge and that has to be addressed so in even uh, omega 3 fatty acids improve and also you see there is increased uh, m1 to m2 macrophage changes epigenetic marker changes that happen and obviously there is an increased dysbiosis that is improved even skin derived skin substitute are, are being used for this wound healing now so how did i do this we used a continuous remote nutritional integrated wound care platform wherein we are able to to track the patient's wound provide continuous remote care and obviously uh, use a uh, 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 high touch wherein people are uh, 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 this whole thing is ai integrated and we are doing more than lip service actionable steps using high touch solution with diet versus disease we we just have to go through words uh, high touch solutions and we are able to take take the the patients are to take the pictures the pictures come to me and are my uh, associates and they are able to give then i also i, I track body composition testing too so Uh, final slides coming through the most important factor in wound healing equation is not bacteria biofilm perfusion and host factors all these are very important nutrition is the key and access to healthcare is a huge thing the future of healing will be genomics but the healing of the ulcer in a compromised host will need a real whole person approach to healing a hole in a person and point of care solutions help but we need uh, uh, platform based approaches in healing integrating people process and technology and medical professionals driven patient empowering solutions and obviously nature is um, there there is rhythm in nature rivers blood vessels trees roots fruits music even the music notes have rhythm we humans don't recognize that what are we missing in healthcare is there a, a real option that we have to take real empowerment that we have to take care and deliver the solution that we need for the people that we are blessed to be taken care of thank you very much
And please reach out to me on Twitter or X, or I'm on social media. I can help any questions. There will be a full uh, one and a half hour session on this that I will be doing down the road, hopefully. Great talk. <laughs>